Every time they buff Jarvan's passive, bad things happen in the meta. Now, this is a thing that's gone back and forth for years, where they buff it to 10%, 9%, 8%, 7%, 6% recently, we're back at 7% now. It improves his clears, it improves his skirmishing, and he is one of the champions that actually works very well with, obviously, Spear of Shoujin. Now, we are far cry away from the diseased Spear of Shoujin builds from last season, but nonetheless, still a bit of an issue for most of us. So the Orn versus Garen top lane here, we have the uh, Lux versus Huayi in the mid lane, and Rakan Twitch vs. Jinx Renata. So, we of course are against Viego, we see the Viego here, we understand that he started Red Side Quadrant. Leashless starts across the board this season, obviously, there are cases where you can ask for leashes to misdirect, but there are other ways to misdirect, and really, most of the time, you should be leashless, and using the anonymity it gives you... To have better pathing, to have better invades, to have better jungling. So, crossing the mid lane here is a Viego, just, of course, 226 or so. Uh, same thing from the Javan. Most of the time, I would expect junglers here to full clear, but we're talking about a 96% kill participation game. And we have seen some of those on this channel before, but this one will be a little bit different. We're not going to have 20 kills, but I want to show you how good jungling and good practices will always end up giving you a lead that you can use to carry. So, the worst clear in the game, as we all know, is doing the red side quadrant into a scuttle, into a grump. In this case, the grump has not been taken because he sees a play to be made. He wants to get out ahead of the job and who he knows most likely will be for clearing. And obviously, if you observe this as a jungler, then it's, you know, it's not bad to kind of push a little bit and try and get a gank off. But in this particular situation, were you objectively ever going to be able to do anything about the Jinx and the Renata based upon the wave state and the nature of the matchup? Probably not. So the Javan then, now finishes his full clear, he's level 4, you have to finish this to be level 4 first, now he has the ability to potentially do something. We see nothing, hit this to see where the Viego is, Viego shows up with a W, activates the E, and obviously pay attention to mid lane here, Huey has uh, gone back to base. We have prior for Scuttle Crab, so you absolutely must head to Vukayu.gg. Not only do I have a free jungle improvement resource, I also have a dedicated program with jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching classes, a jungle VOD library, special weekly content you'll see nowhere else, as well as all of this hosted in a private jungle discord. And if there is one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers go from low elo to high elo, as seen by the great number of success stories from the end of last season and already the beginning of season 14. So to climb faster than everybody you know, and to jungle diff every game you play, head to Vukayu.gg or click the link in the description below. Not the most interesting early game, however, let's see if Viego decides to force a little bit. Yes, even a Grandmaster, people like to still go for the Scuttle Crab. Bottom winner going in onto the Jinx here. Can she get a kill for the Grey Health? She can. Very nice rotation there from the Javan. That's a kill onto the Twitch. And now Viego is, well, running away. That's good. So look at this again from a temper point of view in terms of numbers. The Renata moves up to help you, the jungler, on the Scuttle Crab. That does leave your ADC by themselves, and thus the enemy bottom lane, if they're smart, will try and turn this and win it. However, you gotta understand that if the Javan's good, he's gonna turn back and kill you. Is it worth the attempt here and against the Renata? You know, it's a little, you gotta think about it a little bit, but trust me, even if I'm Zyra there, instead of a Rakan Twitch, we're killing the Jinx and we're living, because we'll try and position it such that, you know, we can avoid the Javan. But in this case, they did go pretty deep for it. Both die. Javan rotates absolutely smooth. Quay's out of position. Already lost his TP, so it's very important that we burn Sums here and actually try and kill him. Not able to get it. But now, because of this, the Javan's able to shadow this environment. And here's where big things happen for good junglers. Right now, you're looking at this and you're going, what is Viego meant to do? Back to base. Give up that bottom scuttle, back to base, go straight top set, or if you really are intent on staying out of the map because maybe you started Raptors, then simply as soon as you see this, you go for this gank here as Viego, and you fall back in, just bounce, cross over, snack the sucker up, gank this for your all. Maybe you guys can kill the Garen. And that way you leave the Javan to deal with bottom side, but you're getting stuff on the top side. Alternatively, yes, you can just base straight up and go top side and head out of your business, but if there's a translation play you can make, feel free to do it. But currently, what the Viego is doing with his Rakan and with his team, he's forcing them to kind of make these plays while the Javan is just absolutely able to shadow it. Now, they did nerf the EQ cooldown but to kind of stop that EQ uh, bam, but you know, when you see Javan use that E, as you saw there, 12 seconds, huge to know before Shoujo, before the cooldowns become really meaningful, right? You see a guy EQ somewhere, okay, I got 12 seconds to make a play, to kill him, to kind of gank it before he has EQ again. So bear that in mind. Obviously, uh, the flag living, you know, factored that in as well. Because the flag does survive and give attack speed, the people always see high kill participation Javan and think, 
I could do that, and then they never do. Same with Ivern. Same with Janus. You always see these people with high KP, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, pfft, I could shield everybody, and then they lose because they don't shield everybody. They shield the wrong people, and the right people die. Not good. So that was going on. I missed it. Uh, not missed it, but I was talking about something else. The goon squad arrives for the for your midliner, and as Javan, there's nothing you can do here. You simply finish off your quadrant, and now you decide: Do I cut this, or do I go hold midliner, or do I just keep farming? Obviously, here you got to balance it about what the map is presenting to you. In this case, I like holding this because. You don't necessarily know who's going to go up to this, right? So from your perspective, I'm just going to stick it around here, hold this a little bit, catch some experience. I'll just give this up because I need to see where Rakan goes, where Viego goes, where everybody else goes. Viego's going to go straight forward, and you don't know if Rakan's going to stay there with him, right? Uh, obviously, this is huge. We see the pings, so people are tracking this because F keys are huge. While you're farming, please do that. Finish off your raptors, and now you know, okay, Viego's on the grubbies. His red buff is going to spawn. Top lane is gankable. Will he try and do something a little bit adventurous? Give me total bottom lane control? Or should I just play for myself and my team? Let's see what he chooses to do. Obviously, when you want high kill patient, you got to rotate a lot. you got to understand uh, your damage spikes, when to fight, when not to fight, and not die necessarily. That's always a big thing. People think kill participation is always being in fights and dying. No, but living. So you can be in every fight, not just some of the fights. Now we finish off our quadrant here, we don't go counter jungling because we don't always have those timers. He actually goes for the aggressive play on our blue, I think that's that's logical to assume he's going to do that at this stage. Excuse me, obviously, you know, when red buff spawns and blue buff spawns and he does the grubs, obviously we're going to see some grub snackage and some blue snackage. So we'll just use the bottom lane prior for a dragon. If the team is smart, red team that is, they'll give this up. And Java might look to go a little bit aggressive back in the jungle here and look for a dive on the bottom lane, depending on the composition, because... We might have the Viego either fall back into his right side quadrant or potentially look to uh, gank the Garen, which I don't think he's necessarily going to do. We got the Cull on the Orn here and uh, scan it up. There you go. Make sure it's clear. And now here he is, trapping. That's the decision after Dragon. Do I go straight for the dive in the bottom lane? Is it is it something we can do right now? Or should I actually go into the my jungle here, the enemy jungle, and take stuff quickly before the Viego resets and then use it on the bottom lane or just retract and, you know, not not die? So, Javan decided to try and go for the team play. That's fine, but you will lose, obviously, the experience. And here's goes, here's goes the Viego. Lux rotates. Renata still has Pryo. Quay's well, got the Crash. Garen is using his Pryo. And now Viego's just... Whoa. We do have ult here, but we don't have really a flash, so... Do we go dunkings? I think we can go dunkings if we need to. Dunking. Did we need to? Probably not, but if you're in doubt, it's always better to do it. Uh, don't save your flash and your ult for a blue moon. You can get a kill with it, use it. Here, the whole team is now trying to go in. Beautiful uh, set uh, E there by the way, because that's exactly what that is, but from range for some particular reason. Orn uses the ult for disengage. Javan's uh, EQ will be up again here very, very shortly. Don't really need to use that yet. Now we can go steal the Krugs if we wanted to, or pull back to a blue side quadrant, or go back to base. Here we've got 1200 pocket. I look at the map. No objectives available. Uh, buy is not that amazing. Missed the blue steal from the Viego, but that's okay. Not something he knew, right? But we're 005, 100% KP at this particular stage. That's 5 KP in 9 minutes. So some people I've seen comment when this happens... What a passive game. What a boring game for me. I get five assists out of five uh, kills. And it was boring. It was slow. It was farming. I mean, this is great. You got 100% KP and five kills by nine minutes. And you have an objective. I'm happy. You should be happy too. Obviously, if you're playing Kha'Zix, maybe you want five kills and not five assists. But uh, the play is still most important. And maybe you suck at KSing. Well, not KSing, but like lethal damage, right? Making sure you get that kill. Some champions are better than others at doing exactly that. So... Lux rotates down through the control ward. She hopefully sees it. Now we know where she's going. Viego's goes back in base here, but we don't exactly always know what junglers do when they disappear from vision. Um, it's always good to anticipate and extrapolate as much as you can with your tracking. But we see here the Lux, the Javans on the blue, blue, the red ults go through. And honestly, here you look at this and you see the Lux move down. You see the mid laner here. You see the numbers disadvantage. Um, could you perhaps do something here? We don't have ults. So while most junglers revolve around their ult will look to not do this at all like is an evelyn don't go you don't have ult i'm not gonna fight it just farm it up and make sure i'm uh, nice and healthy for the next time my ult is available javan can kind of look at it the same way but at the same time 
Bottom lane here just shouldn't face check. Like, look, you know they're there. Don't go up. From Javan's perspective, it's like, what are you doing? I know some people are like, should I help here? No, they're idiots. You can see Lux rotate down. You know they're in the brush there. Why would you remotely go and face check it as a jinx? My Javan's right here. If they want to dive, my Javan's right here. The ult will be up at that particular stage. Uh, here we decide to base early. This is kind of what I'm getting to with the thing out. Um, your base here is because we want to contest those next grubs. Now, I made a video on the main channel talking about this, how you must jungle, so go watch that. Link will be in the description to the main channel. Just go directly to be the most, release, most recently released video. And we talk about when you go 3-3, when you go 6-0, how do you go 6-0 when you have no kills and no ganks? All lanes are perhaps not gankable. And um, in this particular case, I look at it and I see Twitch, I see Viego. You know, my comp, you know, I've got the Jinx. I'd like to have three grubs. You know, they've got three, I want three. And I think if we give them six, it's not good, but it's less than if we give them six against the composition. It's more, what about me having Jinx? I need Jinx to have at least three. And here you see, by cutting out the Krugs and going back to base, it allows us to arrive on time because we know that the Viego, based upon this goon squad bottom lane, is going to be by himself with the Ord because they will be resetting. So basically here, we want to be on time, maximal buy. We've got the Sundered Sky. That's exactly what we're trying to go for, by the way. That's why we stayed out. We set a trap over the wall. This is just beautifully done. This is just beautifully done by the Javan. Tracking, extrapolation, patience, good back timing, good buy. And now, he is a little unnecessary from the painter guy, but I'll take his presence over not having it. Uh, Lux shows up here in the meantime. See, I'm looking at you guys. Lux shows up in the meantime. Javan says, instead of doing the uh, grubs while my team fight, why don't I rotate up and ult and dunk because I know she's gotten a flash and even better. So this is where your high KP comes on. Do you see? We have these scenarios where the guy's looking to go somewhere else. He's a play develop and then decides to rotate to it and pick it up. His E, giving that attack speed boost and free assists, hasn't really factored into anything so far. Just good old-fashioned, aggressive map control jungling. Diego shows up because all he needs is one, right? All he needs is one. And they're just trying to kill the Orn. So he's like, well, you know what? I'm not going to coin for this with the Viego. Or does he? Viego gets four and he'll leave now, hopefully. Yeah. Does Javan have smite up again? He does. Viego, you got the one. You have four. You're going to get Mike's leave. Leave. Good. Good from the Viego. That's, on this patch, it's good to do that. Just walk up, smite, don't die. Walk away, take this, take this, take this. Uh, you can always cut in at any particular stage. You can slide into this one to make sure you get that one. You know that everyone's going to try and collapse on the bottom lane here. You'll be his Viego. Ha ha ha. And then you maybe set yourself up for a dragon. So let's see if he does... Exactly that, from Jarvan's perspective, we now lag behind that tempo because obviously he has no Krugs, no Red, and he can ditch earlier while we have to do this whole quadrant. So let's see how it develops, but I could easily see the Viego doing exactly as I said and just cutting into the Dragon. Let's see. Again, I don't see these games. I watched them first time with you. There we go. Uh, back to base for our bottom lane, but we know that the Jinx was pushed up down here. We know that she hasn't based. Well, she has actually because she died. She's 1-3-1, one, one, so she died a lot. Uh, the Javan, in the meantime, is going to be sequencing down. And again, as I said, lagging behind that clear speed and full clear. So, a free gap in tempo there for that nice little objective snack. And that's always the challenge of Grandmaster level, right? Like, you see these moments in time where you know you can quickly take something and you do it because you have the shorter sequencing uh, down here after the grubs. Now, there is a goon squad in our jungle at this particular stage. You see the Twitch there holding this. You see this guy uh, proxying. And you know your bottom lane are in base. So you're not looking to do anything adventurous. We're just going to full clear it out with our 100% kill participation. We will <laughs> get feared. We will go back to base, build some plated steel caps. And really, the goon squatting on the Hui here is pretty obnoxious. But we just watch our Garen float on down. And we'll see. We observe. There's nothing that Java can do in this particular stage. There is a fight going on. The Viego overthrows and dies. And at this particular stage, you're trusting that the lead you've given your team is enough. At this particular stage, it has not been enough. And the Twitch obviously is really, really fat, and your Jinx is not very fat. But we'll rotate straight from base, dunk them, people, all in an AoE zone. We're forced to flash out, maybe a little overzealous on that one. We're not building lethality, Javan. Don't. <laughs> Don't, just play properly. And now the Herald potentially could be stolen away from us. No stress. Relaxed. I kill participation. And, um... The camps will be spawning on the top side. I know Viego will respawn here. We can maybe look to snack away uh, this uh, Scuttle Crab. And we can see, is it possible for us to do this? Herald, with a bit of support from our team. Is risk assessment for the Javan is a little bit um, 
A little bit too risky, I think. So he goes back into his low side jungle. We are now looking. And we see the Rakan and the Lux and the Quich show up on the draw ward. Diego shows up here to go onto the Garen. And guess who's right here because we're in the right place at the right time because we've got good sequencing, a level up. And we won't have our ult just yet, but we'll have the EQ combo smash. Obviously, make sure you're pressing... Uh, I'm going to say press your gore drinker button. Goodness gracious, what a legacy. That item has corrupted even my mind. I didn't even build it out of principle. Out of principle, I never built it. Not because I played mages and Orn and Oliver. But anyway, so nice counter gank here. Beautifully done. Still a lot of damage up from the Viego. Uh, jinx, 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 Jinx. Beautifully done. Now, because we got three grubs, hopefully we can do something with it. Unfortunately, Rakan shows up and we don't know where the Lux is. So actually smart. Smart. Now, in-game, I'm a lot more cautious about like trying to push these things. But in these kinds of videos, I always like to say, guys, you've got to hit the turrets. They get a little excited. I'm not intended for the Jinx's passive. For you guys to go ahead and to go ahead and hit turrets. But most of the time, after your ganks, at this particular stage, the whole team is dead. You can see other people everywhere else. Please don't base here. You know, if Lux was showing and Twitch was showing and three people were dead, don't base here. I see this too often in lower MMR games. Diamond and below, even Master and below. Just push this, snack the turret up. You got three grubs. Well, we got two grubs. Go back to base. It's more than enough with the Jinx passive. And then at least we get a turret. Now, alternatively, you could just go straight for this one if it is available to you. But it's all about who's dead, what are the death, uh, decimal timers, and uh, where are the two remaining people on the enemy team in terms of presence. However, if you see nobody and you're worried about the Lux and the Twitch just goon squatting you guys as you try and do these things, it's fine to reset. As long as you position accordingly, to go ahead and actually snack this up and push waves afterwards. So, the Renata shows up here and we push this wave out here with the Jinx we got uh, in the mid lane. That's good because we want a bit of vision pressure for this next one. I'm worried about the Twitch showing up here in camo, as well as the Viego. And the Javan sees a moment to EQ in. Not the best moment, but maybe he can dunk the Force Splash, which of course he does. Now Twitch from the back line here, we're going to have to reposition all from the flanking side. A great way ult over there with the Garen uh, really getting deep within the enemy team. And the flank from the order is not so good. Nice E against the wall. Nice triple brittle possibility, but it's him by himself trying to save the world. And the Grey Health again. That's twice I've seen that with the Jinx getting the resets. Here she goes again, another one. He steals it. Push the terror, please. We can do this by ourselves. So the job and engage there, what I want you to be mindful of is don't go too far away from your team when they can't follow you. And don't get a little bit too impatient to actually uh, engage when you might... Well, you want to trigger pull, right? You have a numbers advantage. You have someone out of position. Go in. Don't wait. Go in as provided your team could follow. So you want to be ready to go, but don't also be too impatient to do that if the trigger pull isn't quite right and you want to wait a little bit uh, longer but here it was fine we burned the the alt uh and the, the flash from the lux indirectly we burned her alt and garrett follows us up but wasn't the best engage and we did get a little bit lucky but again is it lucky at all no because we made our own luck we have 15 out of 16 kp no we have no kills but our team have done well to play around us here we only have 3k gold but the jinx now down 1,300 gold, but she's not being dealt with, right? She's free on the back line. We're able to front line, use our advantage here, 7,000 gold, to really get, which is less than the Jinx, to actually keep our back line alive. When it's a wake Jinx, you know, you've got to pay attention to that. So the way we win condition depends on our champion, but understand here, you've got a Viego and a Twitch, so if you're not the Javan and you're someone else, even an Assassin here, and you look at the back line there and you're thinking, look, they want to go in. Sometimes it's good for you to let them go in and just kind of play the fight that way. Don't force it too much um, when you're an assassin against the Lux and a Rakan and a Viego and things like this. And now we know that the Lux, this is what I'm talking about, this right here. So this engage was good trigger pull, but we didn't track the Lux's flash. So she flashes over and we almost died. But we still, it's still a good engage. Now here, look at this. We see immediately Twitch mid lane, Rakan on the side of the wall and Lux going that side of the wall. It's warded, fortunately, we have good vision control. But now the Java knows, okay, look, she burnt her flash in the previous fight. She's 100% dead if she's out of position. So what he does is he sees the Huey moving up, and we go trigger pull immediately. She cuts in for some particular reason. No hesitation here. Well, I lied. A little bit of hesitation. I don't think he should have hesita hesitated at all, but I think he wanted to save his EQ. So he makes sure to get into range here. Actually, I lied. Wanted to alt and then EQ to get the knockup. It was unnecessary because she got blown up. But that's the exact kind of trigger pull you're looking to do as a Javan, as an engaged fighter, you burn the flash, you see out of position, you go. 
And even then you can say, well, were the team in a position to follow up? Yes, because I looked at the map, I saw the Twitch out of position, I knew everyone was rotating behind me. Now, of course, here we are. Rukan goes in, a little too late, EQ. Davin already has his uh, full tank both coming through. A little bit more supportive here. The Twitch on the backline flashes out. He will kill the Quay with the expunge. And now, of course, the uh, Aaron's like, well, I get to, 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 uh, to grubby, so I'll push this while well, you guys go ahead and do that. The problem is, uh, if we go and try and do this one, I'm worried about the Twitch flank. There it is. See? Javan. Javan, Javan, Javan. This guy, he is the reason this game is being won. You see, 1 0 19. It's not the flag. The guy's making the right plays. He sees this, he immediately goes and he uses his flash, gets in front of the Twitch. I will protect my jinx. End of story. Huge. Absolutely huge. Understanding your role as a jungler, whether it's 1v9, whether it's win condition, whether it's tank, whether it's a fighter. Fighters are really good at being tanks now because you do damage as well. So if you need to be an assassin and you have a huge lead, you'll do it. If you need to be the tank who peels and controls and helps your ADC stay alive, you can do that too. Garen's pushing that, and we see the Viego in our jungle taking out Gromp down two levels at this particular stage. We just make sure we hit the Qs and the autos, and we'll trap him here, and we'll have an EQ while he's inside. Keep auto-attacking, obviously, has that armor shred. That should be a free Elbaron, if we can maybe EQ onto this uh, Rakan here. Obviously, it's a Rakan, so no. Which bottom side? Free Baron. This has been a great way to kind of look at how we can flow with these decisions, right? Like, this has been a good game just to look at from a jungle perspective. Um... How you would play it, Alton 36, how you would play it against the Viego when you're shadowing, you're just trailing, you're farming while you do things, you give up the right things, make the right play. And if you get 19 kills instead of 2 kills, you know, then the fights are more on you, but it's the same kind of principle always. You're the guy with the gold, with the temper control, with the experience, with the objective. You determine the fights, who wins, who dies. That's a responsibility that a jungler has. Now, it's not always the most exciting with a Javan, but the passive here, even with this kind of game, you know, he did a lot of damage this game. It wasn't like he did the least damage and did nothing. The guy has controlled this entire game. And the passive allows him to build like this, to do a bit more damage, to clear a little bit faster. Nice EQ over the wall here. We don't have the Gorge Ring anymore, obviously, but we do have the Sun and Sky. We'll look at the healing in a second. Oh, the Zap goes through for the Jinx, and then she'll get the resets. Bump, did a bump, did a bump. Beautifully done. 2-0, 24, 26 out of 27 KP. Jinx does die in the end. But it doesn't matter because the end is nigh for the red team. Healing, 4,000. This item is, is wrong. I don't like these kinds of healing items. I, don't, I think if you die, you should die. I think your bad positioning needs to be punished. End of story. I think you don't understanding your champion's limitation needs to be punished. That goes the same for everybody. But it's here. It's our tool. We use it. And that's why Javan, and I'll, I'll put on the thumbnail a more uh, typical build that you would go. But this is perfect for this particular case with a fed twitch. And obviously the Viego, so it, it does a good job of, of helping the job and hit his win condition in this particular game. But I'll put a more regular build on the thermal, just so you know that the Black Cleavers and the Sterexes and these kinds of things are typically what you would normally go. Two, three items to carry as a fighter. And obviously the Shojin is something you can go as well. For obviously more 1v9 stonks if you need it. But in this case, this was good. See you in the next one.